indication of that. My time has expired. Let me turn and uh, recognize the uh, gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Upton. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McKay, you indicated that BP is uh, looking to pay all legitimate damages. Uh, are you willing to put into an escrow account uh, enough money to pay for such uh, damages as might be expected? Well, we've been very, very clear from day one that we're, we, as a responsible party under Open 90, we are going to be responsible and living up to the obligations of Open 90. I cannot comment on whether there will be a fund set aside or not. We've made it clear that the company stands behind these commitments. Uh, we've got a strong balance sheet. We've got a strong company. We intend to stand behind those. I cannot commit today one way or the other on whether a fund would, would serve that uh, in, in furtherance. So that's a, a no at this point? I can't comment yes or no. Why not? I thought you, the buck stops there. We, we, what we've said is we're going to honor all legitimate claims, and we, the, the full company stands behind that. Have you asked uh, the, the federal government for any help that you've not received? Uh, not that I know of. What grade would you give the administration in its efforts to stop this bill? We've been cooperating in every way we, we know how with the administration. And, a, B, C, D. I, I can't give a grade. We, this has been a unified command that we've been a participant in with many government agencies. Industry, uh, we've got 150 companies working on this. Uh, I can't comment on a grade of individual components of that. Uh, of the, uh, your counterparts that are at the table, have any of them, are you working with any of them to try and stop the... The leak? Yes, all, all of these companies have been tremendously supportive in helping us. A uh, question for all of you. Uh, as you do drills, uh, drilling uh, across the world, uh, which country has the toughest regulations uh, that enforce those regulations? And, uh, what, and if that country gets an A, uh, where would you put the U.S. Uh, with the enforcement by the MMS? Mr. Tillerson. Well, I think the, the United States and then the North Sea countries have the most mature regulatory structure around offshore drilling activities because that's where it's taken place the longest. And I can tell you those standards then get taken to countries that do not have established uh, regular, regulatory structures, and the same standards are applied everywhere. So the same standards are in the Gulf as they are in the North Sea? By and large, they are the same. What For ExxonMobil, we take what we believe to be the best practice, the best, and then apply that globally because it really doesn't matter where you are. If you, if you have a well control incident, you need to use the best you have everywhere in deep water drilling. And it's not an area where you make some distinction that I'm going to cut a corner in this country because I can. Well, I know that when the, the, in the North Sea when they had the accident, I think it was back in 1988, and 100-some uh, folks, 180 as I recall, uh, might have... Piper Alpha. Right. The... Uh, Changes were made to, in essence, split the MMS similar to, or split the enforcement agency similar to what the administration is now proposing with the MMS. So is, that is a better system than what we have in the United States, right? You know, I don't know that the structure is as important as the competency and the process by which uh, the oversight occurs. Mr. Watson, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can grade. Uh, all the differences across the jurisdiction. I just want to know what's, what, what is the what model should we lo be looking at and we start with, with the enforcement tool? Uh, Congressman, we start with the regulations in each country and then we apply uh, our standards on top of those regulations. And they are very similar. Uh, the application of our processes and procedures are very similar in, uh, in all the countries. Where there are particular requirements in a particular country, we of course uh, comply with those. Uh, our view is certainly that the U.K. and the U.S. have very high standards. Mr. Mova? The greatest uh, part of our experience and operation has been in the North Sea, particularly Norway and the United Kingdom. And in Norway and the United Kingdom have especially developed some of the best practices that are applicable and used around the world. So it's based on our experience over many, several decades that uh, those best practices and oversight and review have been applied and used in the industry and other places of the world. So I would say that they, write, they rank right up at the top in terms of uh, capability and uh, development of practices. Mr. 
Odom? Similar answer in that I think the U.S. does have one of the most comprehensive set of recommendations for the industry in the world. There are, we, you can find other areas where a particular regulation may be more stringent than what you see in the U.S. The important part for us as a company is going back to what I called in my testimony our, our global standards.